Since it's almost Valentine's Day, let's talk about kissing spine, also known as Baystrips disease. If you're a horse person or in the veterinary field, you've definitely heard of this in horses because it's extremely common. But in humans, it's an underdiagnosed condition that causes chronic lower back pain. So let's talk about it. A 65 year old man came to my office with complaints of chronic lower back pain. He's had back pain for a number of years and it's focal. It's right in the center of his lower back and it hurts right there if he presses on it. it. Feels better if he leans forward, but if he extends his back backwards, it hurts even more. On physical examination, he is obese and has a protuberant belly. And because of his bigger belly, he has to hyperextend his back to keep that weight balanced. Here are the x-rays of his lower back and you can see where he has an exaggerated lordosis of his spine. What does that mean? You see, our spine has a natural curvature to where in the lower back you have a curvature going this way called a lordosis, and in the thoracic spine you have a kyphosis, and then in the neck you have an additional lordosis. Here you can see what I'm talking about with the lordosis in the lumbar spine, kyphosis in the thoracic spine or your chest, and then a lordosis in your neck. And these curvatures are all natural to ensure that your head lies straight above your pelvis, and that allows you to walk upright. Some people have an exaggerated lumbar curve, and that often happens in patients that have a protuberant abdomen or a heavy belly. It's almost like a compensation mechanism in order to hold that weight. Here is another picture diagram, and you may have often heard it called swayback. Now, what does that have to do with a horse? If we exert weight on a horse right here, like when we're riding the horse, it will cause an exaggerated lordosis in the horse's spine. And we're specifically looking at these bones right here that are called the spinous process. Humans also have spinous processes as well, and those are the bones that you feel when you press on your back. All right, let's get to the point here. Now what I want you to do is watch these spinous processes whenever I force this spine to go into a lordosis. And you see right there where those spinous processes start to touch each other. And that is called kissing spine because those spinous processes are starting to kiss each other. Now this can happen in patients with an exaggerated lumbar lordosis, but it can also happen over years of chronic degenerative disc disease when the patient starts to lose their natural curvature of the spine and these spinous processes can start rubbing on each other. And the pain is very focal right here. And you can see why they would get worse pain when they extend their back and then get relief if they flex their back or lean over because that pulls the spinous processes apart and there's no more bone on bone rubbing. Here you can see on this x-ray where the spinous processes right here are all touching each other. Now here is our patient's actual x-ray and you can see it right at L4 and L5. He does have that kissing spine and then you can also see it here on a CT scan and even more clear on the axial view where you can start to see that there's hypertrophic bone and sclerosis that's happening to that spinous process. Here is the MRI of his lumbar spine and overall he has very minimal pathology here, minimal compression of the nerve roots with a few bulging discs, but here you can see this bursitis here that's happening from those spinous processes that are rubbing together. And that's why none of those injections worked. Epidural steroid injections didn't work because there's no significant compression of the nerves. Facet injections didn't work because there was no facet hypertrophy or arthritis of the facet joints and the sacroiliac joint injections didn't work because he didn't have sacroiliac joint pain. So the symptoms to summarize are chronic lower back pain that's worse in extension, better in flexion. They usually have a restricted range of motion with tenderness overlying that spinous process. It's caused from excessive lumbar lordosis, degenerative disc disease, aging, and repetitive hyperextension movements in athletes such as gymnasts and weightlifters. It's easiest, in my opinion, to see it on x-ray or CT, and you can often see signs of bursitis on the MRI scan. I failed to mention this in the first video, but you guys were on it. And yes, of course, we want to educate patients on weight loss 
and they will also go to physical therapy to work on core strengthening and correcting their posture to reduce stress on the spine. But this particular patient did not have any relief with those conservative treatment options. We also treat with medications such as anti-inflammatory medications. Muscle relaxers can help somewhat if there are muscle spasms present, and then focal steroid injections will work but you have to put it in the right spot, which is right between the spinous processes. Otherwise, it's not gonna work in any of the other locations that he had tried. Now, I did mention spinal cord stimulation, and it is indicated in non-surgical refractory lower back pain. Many of you guys suggested that it wouldn't help, but it is a relatively new treatment that has received recent FDA indications for this type of pain. But the key to that is that the patient can't have something surgical that may correct their problem. And there is a surgical treatment for kissing spine. Just like in horses, we can go in and shave down the spinous process so they no longer rub on each other. And that is called a partial resection of the spinous process to give some separation of those bones so they no longer kiss. And you can do just fine without these spinous processes because their role is for muscular attachment only. So if you remove them, it's really not that big of a deal. And we often do it in many types of spine surgery, including microdiscectomies, laminectomies, and spinal fusions. In fact, when I do surgery for base strips disease or kissing spine, I usually just remove the entire spinous process of the affected level so there is no chance of recurrence. So to be clear, our patient failed all conservative treatment options, including weight loss, physical therapy, core strengthening exercises, over-the-counter anti-inflammatory medications, and multiple rounds of injections. I did give him an interspinous steroid injection, which did transiently relieve his pain, which gave me assurance that the diagnosis was in fact base strips disease. So what we did in our patient is we made a small incision overlying his spinous process and resected the affected spinous process. Very quick procedure, and in fact, it takes about 30 minutes, and the patient can go home the same day of surgery. And the key in these cases is recognizing the diagnosis, confirming the diagnosis, and offering the patient the correct surgery. He did great, and after a few weeks of recovery, he had no more pain. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week, and I'll go through another case. And happy Valentine's Day.